coming. Um, as you know, obviously I'm Katherine Ewing and I'm delighted to do this burning bowl ceremony. I've been doing it online maybe for about four years now. And um, each year it just seems to be more and more profound. And so I hope your experience tonight um, matches the experiences that we've had other years. I just want to make sure before we start that you have some paper and something to write with. Um, and so if, if you don't, I'll give you a, a minute or so to go get something. And I'm actually going to change the screen here and uh, I've prepared um, a slideshow to um, so that you're not just looking, you know, at a black screen or just my face for the for the presentation, but there'll actually be some um, slides and some things to see. So if you don't have something to write with uh, or on, why don't you go ahead and get that while I uh, use my master technological skills here and uh, bring my PowerPoint presentation up. I'll see if I can get this. Actually, to start from the beginning. Oh, lovely. Move this out of the way. So, um, once again, would someone just let me know that you can see the PowerPoint? I'm going to move uh, us out of the way. Is that visible to all of you? Yes. Okay, great. All right, so let us start then. Um, and as I said, I am making a recording of this. So I'm actually just going to make sure the recording is on so that anyone who um, was hoping to join us but not able um, can watch this later on. All right. So again, welcome, everyone, and thank you for being here. Um, I'll just explain a little bit about what we'll be doing this evening. Some of you may be familiar with the burning bowl ceremony, but just in case you're not, um, I want to thank you for being part of this sacred ceremony. So we're going to come together here to really be very intentional about stepping out of this year, this year of 2018 that's coming to a close and stepping fully into a year that's opening ahead of us. Um, and so tonight, it's my intention to provide you with an opportunity to really take time, you know, out of your everyday life. We don't often have an opportunity to do that, to just sort of step out of our ego minds, our beta brains that are busy, 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 do, 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 um, so busy with tasks and worries, judgments and fears, and really step into a time of sacred contemplation and renewal. We're going to do this through music and prayer, journaling, meditation, and conscious intention. We'll take time to quiet our minds. Next, to quiet our minds. Let me see why this is not going. Ah, there we go. And our bodies, so that we may connect with the deep places of inner knowing that resides within each of us. We will be um, doing two different pieces tonight. We will be <laughs> a little, it jumped a little bit ahead. So we'll be releasing the energy of past experiences, both from this year and also um, really from a lifetime or even through past lifetimes, things we are, have still been carrying and haven't had an opportunity to let go of yet. So emotions and limiting beliefs, um, <clears throat> again, of the, just this past year of, or of every, uh, the past of our entire soul uh, journey. And we will be writing them down. And in, in a typical burning ball ceremony, there is actually an opportunity to take what you have written and burn it in a fire. Um, 
we're not going to do that here tonight because obviously I don't want anybody burning anything down, but we are going to use the violet flame of St. Germain, um, which is an actual real flame. Um, and I'll explain more about that in a little bit, but it's a sort of a symbolic way to do the burning aspect of this ceremony. And then we'll spend some time visioning your ideal future, considering all areas of your life, writing down your ideas, um, things that you want to create and manifest uh, in the coming year. So the sacred act of releasing the past and envisioning the future is important every year and certainly at different times during the year, such as the full moon and the solstice, as we just experienced last week, both the full moon and the solstice um, back to back. It's especially important tonight as we end this very chaotic and tumultuous year, I think we can all agree that 2018 has been a doozy um, in some very challenging ways. And we step into the new consciousness that 2019 represents. And uh, I don't know if you're familiar with a spiritual teacher by the name of Matt Kahn, but he, Matt tells us, I just read this in his newsletter yesterday, so if you, see, if you look at the top of this, the 2019 in numerology, if you add the numbers across, so two plus one is three and nine make 12, and then you add the two and the one or collapse those down, it uh, comes down to three and that's how numerology works. But Matt says um, 2019 is where your deepest soul's essence and your highest life purpose emerge in awareness with synchronistic support from the universe to bring your dreams to life. So that to me tells us that we're moving into a year where really what has been our soul's purpose and, and you know, our soul signature, our soul energy, everything that we've come to this human experience with on the soul level um, are re is really going to start to come into our awareness this year and that we'll have a lot of support from the universe to begin to manifest that and to bring um, all of those dreams, all of that sense of um, something bigger, something grander, something uh, perhaps even more important than we've done so far to begin to manifest. So the potent and powerful energies of chaos, and you see some of that here with the, with the um, pictures of the fires in California, and these are students from Parkland. So much destruction and loss of life due to weather events, random acts of violence, and the breaking down of institutions and systems that are no longer in vibrational alignment with the new higher vibrations that are pouring onto the planet and that we're ushering in clearly signaling a time that we're in a time of great change and transformation, both uh, for us as individuals, for our communities, and for the world. So this evening, I invite you, as we do our releasing processes, to be especially aware of your intuitive voice, the part of you that knows what serves you best, the part that knows what it is that you're ready to let go of at a deep level, perhaps even a subconscious level, and what your heart and soul are calling for you to step into. I invite you to choose tonight to let go, to release and to lay down anything that keeps you from shining your brightest light in the world. Choose tonight to become a conscious co-creator of your most brilliant, expansive self so that you can be able to serve the world according to your deepest joy and your highest purpose. If you've participated in this type of ceremony before, a burning bowl ceremony, you know that there is a significant difference in the energy of what's typically called New Year's resolutions and what we'll be doing here in the time that we have together this evening. So in a burning bowl ceremony, rather than giving something up 
or promising to do something out of a sense of expectation or obligation or shoulds, right? We should all over ourselves. We should be taking time to drop deeply into our hearts, listening to our own divine guidance, allowing that which wants to be released and that which wants to be created to really be revealed to us from deep within. It's not a process of the mind. It comes from a deep connection to our heart and our inner knowing. And when we intentionally and willingly let go of the things from the past that no longer serves you, as Matt said in his quote there about 2019, spirit then steps in to assist and clear that energy from your mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical bodies. And once that healing and clearing is done, then it's up to each one of us not to recreate those experiences by going back into those same old beliefs and patterns once they're symbolically released through this alchemical process of burning that we'll do. The intentions that you set for 2019, anchored in through the actions of writing, creates a sacred contract with the universe. Together with the others gathered in this sacred space here with us now, and those who will listen later, our prayers and intentions are grounded deep into the earth and broadcast far into the cosmos. As I've mentioned, we'll have two different segments to our uh, program or this evening. The first will be the releasing, what we no longer want to take with us, letting go of everything from this year and prior years or lifetimes that we know is no longer serving us. And then a segment where we will do some visioning, intending and journaling as we go forward into 2019. Life is, or at least it should be, a process of letting go and then letting in, right? Giving and receiving, releasing and receiving. This is the rhythm of the universe, the rhythm of life. We might even call it the divine rhythm, the flow of giving and receiving. It's important for us to continually let go of negative beliefs, destructive emotions, unhealthy relationships, as well as any tendency to resist change. It supports us when we continually let go, let the spirit of life take over in us, to fill us with new life, to recreate us in mind and body. We've all heard the phrase that we need to die to our old selves, right, in order for a new self to be born. We die to the ego self. We die to the idea of separation. We die to the idea that we're here alone on this human journey, just trying to struggle through every day. The more we die to those old paradigms and old beliefs, the more we can be reborn and um, recreated into the new paradigm, the new paradigm of universal support, cosmic support, unity. Um, so every spiritual tradition tells us that, that we need to die to the old self in order to be born new and expanded into the, our highest version of ourselves. Tonight, we'll take some time to reflect on the events of this past year, on our own habitual and unconscious patterns of thinking and speaking and acting that don't serve our highest potential. As within, so without. We choose to declutter and clear out that which is currently taking up space in the mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical closets of our lives. We choose to consciously and intentionally let go of anything that does not support our unfolding into our highest potential and our highest good. This ceremony facilitates change. It takes us outside of the walled paths that we ordinarily travel along. And when I say that, I'm literally talking about neural pathways, right? The, the neural connections, the synapses, the patterns, the programs, you know, they say what 
wires, what fires together, wires together. So the, the thoughts that we think over and over again, the beliefs that have been handed down to our family, even what's been wired into our DNA through the generations, those are the walled paths that we ordinary travel, ordinarily travel along. When we do a conscious practice, as we will this evening, then we are able to step outside or beyond these old neural pathways and create new neural pathways in the brain, cutting across the old ones that have been formed as a result of repetitive thoughts. I'm not sure why this is not going forward. <laughs> Come on. Hello. All right. And in the spirit of releasing and creating from our deep heart space, recognizing the presence of spirit in this space now with us, I'd like to offer this prayer. <clears throat> Dear sweet spirit, in this time of transition, of beginning and endings, of cycles and seasons, we call upon your presence in our hearts and invite your guidance during this ceremony. We ask that you send your breath of life into our hearts to ignite our inner light and help us to discern what is ours to release what is ours to call in in the coming year. Help us to put our ego mind aside and allow our hearts to lead in this sacred time and through this sacred practice. Amen. So we'll begin to move now into the releasing aspect um, of the ceremony. And I think I'll invite you actually to go ahead and close your eyes. Again, making sure that you have um, something to write with and something to write on. And we'll just take a moment with your eyes closed. You might even want to place one hand gently over your heart. As you close your eyes and place a hand on your heart, it really blocks out the visual stimulation and it brings your attention to where your hand is. So we drop out of our mind and into our heart and connect more deeply there. I'm just taking a moment in this space to connect with your own heart. to become curious about what it is that you are wanting to release from your life, whether it's things that are specific to this past year, or perhaps things that you've been carrying with you through a lifetime or multiple lifetimes as we consider this process of releasing, I invite you to consider all aspects of your beingness, your mental body, which is your thoughts, thoughts that might serve you or thoughts that might not serve you. Research tells us now that the average adult has 70,000 thoughts a day. Of those, about 85% are repetitive. In other words, we have similar thoughts looping through our mind an overwhelming percentage of the time. And of that 85%, about 90% are either negative or unsupportive. So if you do the math, that's about 50,000 thoughts a day that may be holding you back, that may be keeping you stuck, <clears throat> looping through old, behavior, old familiar thoughts, beliefs that may not even have been your own, that may just have been, you know, 
brought down through your family or your religion or your educational system or the kind of work that you did. You know, we pick up belief systems all along the way. So there may be some things in your mental body that you're ready to release this evening. There may also be things in your emotional body. We know now through the work of Bruce Lipton and Greg Braden and, you know, other people who are studying the effects of <clears throat> emotions, emotion, energy in motion. Every emotion has its own vibrational frequency. Every emotion has its own chemistry in the body. That's how we know what we're feeling. Some like joy and appreciation and gratitude are very high vibrating and others like shame or guilt or blame or disappointment or grief or despair are very heavy. And we develop our own, what I call our own personal energy signature, our own vibrational frequency based on the preponderance of the emotions that we have carried with us through our lifetimes. And so it's an opportunity tonight to release and transmute through the alchemical process of the violet flame in St. Germain to release some of those emotions, that emotional energy that's no longer serving you. <clears throat> there may be something physical that you want to let go of. Perhaps you've been struggling with some illness or dis-ease, some pain um, in your body. And we have the opportunity here in this ceremony to choose to release the pain from the body while we still lean in to whatever lesson, whatever our body may have been trying to bring to our attention through that pain or through that disease or through that condition. And then finally, releasing anything from our spiritual body, whether you believe in karma, whether there are um, some kind of energetic imprints in your spiritual field, whether there may be any attachments um, or energies that are just not um, you, right? Your own spiritual energy, your own um, spiritual self. So just inviting anything that is not the truth of who you are to be released from your spiritual body. So we're going to take some time now. I'll give you a few minutes and um, just going along with what I've said, I'm going to invite you to go ahead and begin to write as I share with you a little about, well, I'll wait. I'll tell you about the violet flame afterwards. So there's no particular right or wrong way to do this um, other than to allow this, whatever is bubbling up to be released, to really come from a place inside of you. And if you notice yourself getting up in your head, to just invite yourself to drop back into your heart, to allow your intuition, your inner knowing, your inner guidance to really guide this process. And so I'm just gonna put some music on here for a few minutes and just let you go ahead and do your writing.
just take another minute or so to finish up. And you can always, of course, go back and do more of this. Just another few moments now. And so normally, if we were doing a live burning bowl, as I mentioned at this point, this is where you would have the opportunity to bring the list of things that you were ready to release and let go of actually to some kind of fire. Um, and literally watch it burn in the fire. But since we were going to be doing this virtually and everybody was going to be indoors tonight, um, we're actually going to bring this uh, to the fire of the violet flame. Um, you may or may not be familiar with this idea. Um, Saint Germain is an ascended master. He actually walked on the earth in several different incarnations and uh, graduated, if you will, <laughs> to a place as, as an ascended master. And he has uh, the violet flame that's associated with Saint Germain is really spiritual alchemy in action. So, and the business, of course, and the name of my business is Sacred Heart Alchemy, because I believe that we can transmute and transform anything within the sacred space of the heart. And so here tonight, we will use the alchemical process of the violent flame, this divine gift and tool. There are people who um, have a gift of seeing where they have actually seen the, uh, the flame itself. Um, and so there, there's actual evidence that it is a real thing and a real gift, and we can use it in our lives on a daily basis to uh, release and transmute any heavier, dense energies that we no longer, um, you know, whether it's emotions um, or other things that we don't want to carry any longer. So just as alchemical alchemy is said to turn lead into gold, the ultimate purpose of the violet flame is to turn us physical humans into divine human because that's the truth of who we are right we are divinity in physical form so this helps um, bring in more light transmute the denser energies and allow us to step more fully into our divine human selves its action transmutes dense energies, feelings, actions, deeds, and karma into a higher vibrational frequency. This sacred fire exists on the higher dimensions. It helps us prepare for our own ascension process. Ascension meaning becoming a divine human, also known as becoming a Christed being. A level of consciousness that's obtainable by anyone when they practice spiritual principles. So you may use the violet flame in perfect harmony with any belief system, religion, or practice. So in order to use the violet flame, we first ask our higher self, a master, a guide, or an angel to assist as it's helpful to visualize um, some assistance from the higher realms. And we simply need to imagine that there is a ball of violet fire above your head. Some people actually imagine it as a fire that they can step into, but in this particular process, imagining that there's a ball of violet fire above your head and ask that ball of fire now to come down into your body to fill every speck, every cell, every space, right? every bone, ligament, muscle, tendon, organ, fluid, 
in your physical body. And when you've invited the violet flame in to every aspect of your being, imagine now that you're spinning the flame in and around your body. It's just spinning all around, keeping the flame inside your body while also inviting it to come out through your heart chakra and then spin around or encircle the outside of your body so that it's encompassing your emotional, mental, and spiritual bodies. I've also done something like this with another master teacher where we use a rose, which is the highest, one of the highest vibrating energies on the planet, to also move through our energy field. But so just imagine for this purpose, using this violent flame, both on the inside of your physical body and then coming out through your heart, and just circling around in your energy field, in your aura, just clearing up, cleaning up, transmuting any heavy or dense energy. Ask the violet flame to transmute anything that you wish to be changed or eliminated from your life. You can say something as simple as transmute anything and everything standing in the way of my ascension. It's really the intention and the feeling behind your request. We might also add the phrase, in all dimensions, on all levels, through all time and space, past, present, and future. And then this makes sure that we are really inviting the violet flame to move through all space and time um, and all of our lifetimes and multidimensional selves. We also invite the violet flame to change, transmute any negativity into divine light and then fill both your physical body and your energy body with that divine light. We know that energy is never lost, so it can't be deleted, but it can be changed into a higher frequency. And this is why it's important to ask the violet flame to do this on your behalf. This violet flame uh, invocation turns everything into the gold and platinum light of the Christ consciousness, which encompasses all the qualities of other colors. And we see here, I am the violet flame in action in me now. I am the violet flame to light stone I bow. I am the violet flame in mighty cosmic power. I am the violet flame shining every hour. I am the violet flame blazing like a sun. I am God's sacred power freeing everyone. So just taking another couple of moments to allow the violet flame, St. Germain and the violet flame to complete its work, its transmutation. Just sitting in the silence for a moment before we move into the second part of our experience this evening. So just taking a few moments there to use um, the sacred Tibetan bowl to clear the energy and to shift our energy into the second part um, 
of the ceremony tonight. So in this second part, this is where we'll do the visioning, where we consciously and intentionally create that which you want to manifest in your life beginning in 2019. It, that doesn't mean it has to end in 2019, right? It can be a vision that extends beyond 2019, but certainly stepping into the new year. So to begin the second part of the, semin of the ceremony, I was going to say uh, seminary, <laughs> of the ceremony, once again, I'm going to invite you to uh, look at all areas of your life, work, relationships, health, finances, your spiritual life, places where you want, may want more joy or abundance or peace or prosperity. So it can be anything having to do with being or doing or having. Whatever it is that you want to create moving forward. So once again, I'm going to invite you to take a few moments to breathe into a relaxed state of mind and body. And if it helps again to place your hand over your heart and lower your eyes, to drop your awareness from your head and into your heart. Once again, inviting spirit to enter, guiding you deep, into a deep knowing of what your soul desires to create in the year ahead. Remembering those words of Matt Kahn that this is the year where your soul's deepest essence, where your passions and desires, right, to create some aspect of your life will really start to come into your awareness and will begin to manifest with the support of spirit. So taking a few moments now to listen to your own inner voice. Allowing yourself to begin to consider all of those different areas. And you even might want to jot down each of those areas on a piece of paper before you actually start fully writing, right? Work, relationships, health, finances spiritual life, personal life, places where you might, might want more joy, peace. So once again, creation is a two-step process, right? We always create internally first. We always have the impulse or the intuition or the idea something that bubbles up inside of us and then becomes more clear through our mental process and then we begin to create it in the outer world so it's literally as we begin to take this energy connect it to our thought and then speak it out loud or write it out loud and literally begin to impress it into the quantum field and that is how we start the vibrational um, flow where spirit can then begin to respond to us. So everything that's created in the outer world is at first created in your inner world. So taking, again, a few moments to listen to that inner voice, to start to formulate some positive and affirmative statements regarding the things that you want to manifest beginning in this coming year. Allowing yourself now to release any limiting beliefs, any conditions, as well as concerns about how you're going to create these things. The how is not your problem. <laughs> it's, it's the what and the why that are really the drivers here. The how is the work of spirit, how it's going to begin to bring the pieces to you, how it's going to begin to organize that quantum field. The, the universe is a giant organizer, right? And it will, when you bring your passion, your desire out in the form of your um, statement, right? Your intention, as you begin to 
manif put that out into the quantum field, then the universe will take care of how to put the pieces together. So allow your deepest desires to be expressed. And then I'll have you begin to write them down. I'm going to invite you to consider writing this in the form of a letter to yourself, beginning with these words. Dearest beloved, and then put your name as you're addressing the letter to yourself. And then your first sentence might start with, I am so grateful and happy that. And you begin to write the things that you intend, that you want to create and manifest as though they were already present in your life. Because we know when we hold the energy of something in the present moment and we feel the emotion of that as though it is already so, that that generates and creates a higher frequency, a higher energetic vibration that supports bringing that to us more quickly. Uh, it's much more magnetic when it comes from that feeling place than it is when it comes from our mental space. So if you start with that phrase, I am so grateful and happy that, it can put you in that place of writing as though this is already your life. So I'm going to uh, put the music back on and stop talking for a few minutes and allow you to now begin to write your letter of desire or intention or visioning for yourself. All right, we'll take another minute or so. And as you finish um, writing your letter, just as I invited you to open it a certain way, and you know this is completely up to you, you're always at choice, 
Um, but I was going to also suggest that as your last sentence, you write this or something greater, right? Because our minds can only make up what our minds can make up, right? We have great imagination, but uh, it doesn't compare to what spirit or what the universe might be able to provide for us. So you can write down all of your own intentions and desires. And as I, I like to say, I always like to leave space for grace, right? I like to leave room for spirit to come in and do something more uh, or greater or surprising. Um, so I just invite you to consider putting that at the end of your letter. And in writing this way, making the statement along with your intentions, you actually become the authority. And the word authority comes from the word author. So you literally become the author of your new life story. You are declaring and affirming the wonderful year and the wonderful life that is about to unfold by seeing it as already manifested. And so it is. And when you're finished writing, I'm going to um, give you a moment to reread your letter just to see if there's any last minute additions. Um, And then if we were actually doing this again at a burning bowl ceremony, what would happen now is that you would fold your um, letter and put it in an envelope and address it to yourself. And then whoever was facilitating the ceremony would collect them and hold on to them and actually send it back to you mid-year, somewhere around the end of June, the beginning of July. Um, so you have a few options here. You can f put fold it up and put it in an envelope, uh, seal it and put it away someplace and, and put a, an alarm on your phone or a reminder in your calendar to open it in six months um, and just kind of see what has transpired in that time. Or if you feel that it would be perhaps more um, supportive for you to have it at hand to refer to, to sort of keep yourself on track, you can always do that as well. You can you know, post it somewhere where you can see it or even uh, take a picture of it. I did this on Sunday at Unity when we, when we did a little bit of writing at Unity. I just took a picture of it with my phone. And so I have it with me sort of as a constant reminder. But whatever you decide to do with it at this point, you've made a contract between yourself and God. And in doing so, you've called upon the powers of the universe to support you. You've called upon the universe to support you in creating your vision. And now, having done the releasing and the envisioning, this particular process is complete. So I'm gonna bring us back onto screen here. Here we are. And I think everybody, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna unmute. We can take a minute. So I think I'll stop the recording at this point. Um,